parks are the beauty spots of our cities. Urban sanctuaries for nature, people, and culture. We explore five of the most beautiful city parks in Europe in all four seasons. Today, the Villa Borghese Gardens in Rome. A fashion designer takes us to a photo shoot in the park. We meet the rich and beautiful at the elegant Hotel de Rossi and discover the huge art collection of Galleria Borghese. Spring in Rome. The Eternal City is world famous for its countless churches, cathedrals, and monuments. In the center, the Villa Borghese Gardens, one of the largest and most beautiful city parks in Europe. Once the gardens lay outside the city walls, they belonged to the summer residence of Cardinal Scipio Borghese, one of the most influential art collectors of the Italian Baroque. In his villa, Borghese amassed works by Leonardo da Vinci, Titian, and Caravaggio. Parts of his collection are still on display. Today, the park is open to the public. In 1901, the Italian state bought the 80 hectares of land for the equivalent of 10 million euros. For the people of Rome, the park on the Pincian Hill is a godsend. It's the calmest and most tranquil space in the city. It's May. Rome is hot and sunny. Climbing up the hill is cumbersome. There's a kiosk with typical Italian food and refreshments at Viale Fiorello da Guardia. Amir Azar is the owner. The challenge is to store all the ingredients and drinks in such a limited space and still be able to move around. We are like an orchestra. Everyone has to play along. Everyone has their part. So that in the end, we have a beautiful symphony. On request, Amir prepares picnic baskets for park visitors filled with delicacies that will make anyone's mouth water. The secret of an Italian picnic is quality and simplicity. We only use the best ingredients. For years, Amir's bestsellers have been panini with ham and buffalo mozzarella. If you work with good products, the preparation is quite simple. Everything depends on the quality. It pays off. This is how it works. Amir has invited two of his friends for a picnic this afternoon. In an electric vehicle, we drive down Via La Pietro Canonica into the eastern part of the park. I was born in Iran, but I grew up here. Italy is my home. Rome is my city. I love Italy. I love the Italians. I love Rome. Everything I've learned in my life, I've put into this kiosk.
When he was 14, Amir started working at the kiosk on Sundays. He fell in love with the little shop and became friends with the owner. When Amir finally took over the kiosk, his friends thought it was a bad idea. Today we have a simple picnic. We can adjust it to the tastes of our customers. We have a San Daniela ham that was matured for 24 months and a buffalo mozzarella, which comes from one of the most famous cheese factories in Rome, from Micocci. Very simple. And then we have a beautiful grana padano. His love of Italian cuisine and lifestyle has turned Amir's kiosk into a magnet for locals and tourists. Working in the park is a dream come true for him. For me, Villa Borghese is a paradise. The chirping of the birds, the flowers, the smell of the plants. All this in the historical center of Rome. But everyone creates their own dreams and their own destiny. The Piazza del Popolo, with its famous obelisk, is nestled on the southern tip of Villa Borghese. Behind it lies the River Tiber. The busy streets below the park are lined with hotels, boutiques and restaurants. Campamazzo teams with musicians, filmmakers and fashion designers. On the Via de Greci, fashion designer Rocco Galluccio and his colorful entourage are on their way to a photo shoot at Villa Borghese. As Italians, we grow up with art and we are used to seeing it. Everywhere in the streets you can see churches and statues. We usually don't notice it, but we do take it in. And this is reflected in fashion, in cinema and in music. It's no coincidence that Italy is the cradle of all these art forms. As a scenic backdrop for the photos, the designer has chosen the Museum of Modern Art in the north of the park. The models come from Rome, Rocco comes from Milan. He and his photographer have come here to showcase his new collection. Villa Borghese is a good example. Between the trees and on the avenues, everywhere are statues or monuments. The Romans don't notice this because they see it every day. But tourists go crazy about every inch of Villa Borghese. We still talk about the famous women of La Dolce Vita, who spent their evenings surrounded by sequins, pearls, gold and champagne. They were photographed at all hours, day and night, and they always looked dazzling. I focus on their daughters and granddaughters. They take their mother's clothes, mix them with modern items, and go to the park to have a chat or take a walk.
mi piaceva soprattutto il contrasto tra la I like the contrast between the natural environment and these metallic glittery fabrics with their intense unnatural colors con dei colori molto forti quasi naturali And mostly, Villa Borghese seems like an ideal place. In Villa Borghese, the girls feel at home. They come here to chat, to take a walk. They haven't gone to sit in a bar or show off to the boys. Here, they can be themselves. The property of Cardinal Borghese is a haven of tranquility after a stressful day in Rome. The pines and cypresses, laurels and orange trees, the evergreen oaks, palm trees, ancient statues and fountains are all reminders of the bucolic landscape that once surrounded ancient Rome. The lush Mediterranean vegetation adds to this effect. The long, hot summer days are coming to an end. Autumn is approaching. With the cooler temperatures, Rome seems to quieten down a bit. The air becomes clearer and the light changes. The best view over the city's spires is from the Pincian Hill. This is the main pedestrian entrance to the park. The terrace here was laid out more than 2,000 years ago. In the 19th century, Napoleon and his architect Giuseppe Valadier gave the large balcony its present appearance. In the streets around Piazza del Popolo, we see young people carrying musical instruments. That's because the Conservatorio Santa Cecilia is located nearby. Ilaria Livrizzi has been studying violoncello for two years. Those who've managed to get into the conservatory have to practice a lot. On a sunny day, Ilaria walks up to Villa Borghese. I started playing this instrument when I was seven years old. It was because of a teacher. She played as this lullaby that my mother had always sung to me when I was little. This greatly influenced my choice of instrument. I love its gentleness and warmth. I like Ricerca number three by Gabrielli because the composition is simple but complex at the same time. It's very precise, but in its precision, it's not static but light hearted and cheerful. Mm-hmm. 
La musica mi dà delle grandissime sensazioni. Music evokes enormous emotions in me. Nothing else can do that. Just music. And love maybe. But music evokes all sorts of different feelings. Joy, sadness, fear, sometimes all at once. I like to come to this place because it's somewhat isolated from the Roman chaos. This place is very important for us Romans. It's the green lung of the city and people can get here quickly. Here you can find tranquility. In Rome, the change of the seasons is gentler than in Central Europe. And yet, our bird's eye view reveals how Villa Borghese's green canopy slowly turns yellow. Then come the first grey and rainy days. On a Monday morning in October, a unit of mounted carabinieri saddled their horses for a ride in the park. I am Captain Ilaria Campeggio, commander of the 1st Squadron of the 4th Regiment of the Mounted Carabinieri. I am the first woman commander of the Carabinieri. I command 90 horses and 70 soldiers, both men and women. The Carabinieri are Italy's constabulary, and the 4th Regiment is the only remaining mounted unit of the Italian police force. It has a long tradition. I attended the military academy in Modena. After graduating with honors, I was allocated to the 4th Regiment. For me, this is an invaluable experience because it gives me the opportunity to work not only with officers, but also with horses. And I can assure you, they teach me a lot. In the Piazza di Siena, Commander Campeggio and her comrades train their horses. Once a year, they hold a riding tournament. But their main task is to maintain order in the park. The 4th Regiment of the Carabinieri provides security services for Villa Borghese. We ensure safety in the park by patrolling the paths with our horses. The mounted regiment of the Carabinieri looks like a relic of days gone by. Why does a modern police force need horses? But patrolling the park on horseback makes perfect sense. We have fixed routes for our patrols. With our horses, we can cover a lot of terrain. Of course, we are often stopped by tourists and asked for information. Or mothers with small children approach us because they want to pet the horses. The animals facilitate the interaction between the police force and the people. They represent the state. No animal is better suited than the horse to represent authority. 
eh, l'amministrazione. Piazza di Siena, in the middle of the park, is a replica of Piazza del Campo in Siena. The Tuscan city was the birthplace of the Borghesers. While the original in Siena has changed over the centuries, the copy in Rome still looks the way it used to do. The colorful autumn foliage and the mild temperatures make hearts beat faster. Villa Borghese tries to be modern without forgetting its past. The park management tries to preserve as much as possible of its original features, like the architecture and the plantation, which has changed very little over the centuries. But they also provide many 21st century amenities for visitors, electric cars, segways, and refreshment stalls to make the visit as enjoyable as possible. The golden autumn is coming to an end. On some days, winter brings out the melancholic side of Villa Borghese, a sadness as gray as the stone statues dotting the park. But the bad weather doesn't rain on everybody's parade. Daniele Lombardi hasn't just come here to saunter through Villa Borghese. He's on his way to work. Obviously, when I get up in the morning and go to work, I know what my job is. But I don't know exactly what will happen today. It will definitely be fun and exciting, but each day is different, and this makes my job particularly beautiful and interesting. The Hotel de Russie is one of the finest hotels in Rome. The name of the five-star establishment dates back to the days when many Russians visited the city and speaking French was considered chic among the European upper classes. The hotel takes pride of place at the Piazza del Popolo, next to Villa Borghese. The clientele is well-heeled and demanding. Dorman Daniele does a job that requires composure of mind and manner. You can only do this job if you love it. You always have to smile. No matter what happens in your private life, you come here and it's like being in a theatre. We have customers from all over the world, everyone with a different attitude. The angry one, the talkative, the tourist, the businessman in a hurry. You need to adjust your attitude all the time, and you need to know exactly when to adjust it. Among our guests are artists, singers, actors and politicians. Then you need to be a bit more attentive, but not too much, because they don't want too much attention. They want to be treated as guests. By treating them like normal customers, you respect their privacy. The Hotel de Russie is particularly proud of its romantic courtyard and its elegant garden that extends to Villa Borghese. 
There is no direct connection between the two, but the clever design creates the illusion of a walled-in garden that opens onto a park. In the luxury hotel segment, the courtyard is Russie's unique selling point. We have a beautiful garden in the middle of Rome. When you walk down the narrow alleys, you would never expect to get to a hotel and see all this splendor, and this garden which joins Villa Borghese. Sometimes guests ask me, is this all yours? No, unfortunately, it's not all ours. <laughs> A dreary winter morning in the Eternal City. In February, the temperatures in Rome often hover around 10 degrees, with an average of nine rainy days a month. perfect season for taking a look at the art treasures that are housed in the park. Crossing such a park on your way to work is beautiful, a natural beauty, accessible to all. And sometimes I notice a detail that I've read about in our archives. That is certainly something special. Galleria Borghese is an enormous treasure trove full of artworks. Marina Minozzi is the vice director of Galleria Borghese. The museum is closed on Mondays, and Marina uses a visitor-free day to check up on things. The exuberance of plaster, marble and gold never ceases to amaze her. This unique structure was built at the beginning of the 17th century by Cardinal Scipione Borghese, the nephew of Pope Paul V. Here he housed his art collection. His passion as a collector was incredible. The museum always offers new views that I haven't noticed before. This happens a lot to me because the decor is so rich and the arrangement of paintings and sculptures is so intricate. It's a unique experience because we have extraordinary masterpieces. Caravaggio, Bernini, Raphael, Titian. There was an offer on the table for Titian's Amor Sacro e Amor Profano that was as high as the amount of money the state paid for the entire property, just to show you the unimaginable value of these works. On days when the museum is closed, shipping companies come to collect loans for other museums. Today, a painting is sent to the Louvre in Paris. It frees up a little bit of space in the overcrowded Galleria. The difficulty is that the rooms we have are not very large. 
and we have many visitors. It's one of the most visited museums in Rome and the whole of Italy. Working in this gallery is a unique privilege, especially so because we and the Vatican Secret Archive keep documents of the collection that go back to the early 17th century. So we know the background of the artworks and their provenance. Winter in Rome is much shorter than in other parts of Europe. The first trees are already blossoming. Before long, spring has arrived. A new year begins. Situated on the small lake in the western part of Villa Borghese is the temple of Esculapius. It's home to a group of American freshwater turtles. Umberto Testi looks after all of this. It's not enough to be a gardener in Villa Borghese. You must also be a historian, an architect and an engineer. We live in the present, but plan for the future. Any work we do now affects future generations. In 1986, Umberto started as a gardener in Villa Borghese and gradually worked his way up to become the master gardener. His challenge is to make sure the park's flora doesn't endanger the listed buildings. His team is small due to financial constraints, and spring is their busiest season. Right now, I'm responsible for all the green areas in Villa Borghese. We do all the gardening in the park, cutting, pruning, cleaning. My staff help me with the enormous amount of work that needs to be done on the 80 hectares of Villa Borghese. The other gardeners are more friends than colleagues because they are my former classmates. We went to gardening school together more than 40 years ago. Today, the team is busy with the spring plantation of the Giardini Segreti, the secret gardens. Cardinal Borghese enclosed this space with high walls to shield it from the nosy public. The selection of colorful flowers is based on old plants that Umberto and his workers use as templates. At present, we have 150 species of citrus fruits in the secret gardens. We have bitter oranges, citrons, citrus medicus, which we also call Buddha's hands, and others from all over the world.
We work outdoors. You need to have a passion for this kind of work. You can't do it if you don't love plants. You need to care for them, maintain them, and love life in general. Umberto knows Villa Borghese like no other. He shows us a hidden spot that hardly anybody knows, the tomb of Prince Felice Borghese's favorite dog. The inscription reads, to sport, my faithful friend. The Valle dei Platani, the Valley of Plane Trees, recreates the kind of landscape that used to surround Rome for thousands of years. Today, it's popular with promenaders. These ancient gnarled plane trees are relics of the past and perhaps the last of their kind in Europe. They no longer grow in height, but in breadth and are home to a cheerful parrot colony. In late afternoon, the balcony on the Pincian Hill is busy with street artists and children. Located at the northern end of the Villa Borghese Gardens is the Bio Parco, Rome's zoo. The German animal trader Karl Hagenbeck established it at the beginning of the 20th century. He modeled it on his own zoo in Hamburg, using trenches instead of grills to separate visitors and occupants. Working with animals is fun because it's so varied. It's similar to working in the kindergarten or a school. You have to deal with creatures whose reactions can't be predicted, even if the routine stays the same. We always do more or less the same thing, but we deal with individuals who react differently to the stimuli we offer. Maria Ravali is a zookeeper, responsible for the primates. This morning she feeds the lemurs. They are from Madagascar and live in matriarchal societies. The females are the bosses. Captivity doesn't bother them as long as there is someone taking care of them and feeding them. We make sure we feed the lemurs at the bottom of the hierarchy first. In their natural habitat, things are quite different. They lead a dog's life. Maria hides part of the food to keep the lemurs active and interested. The more aggressive alpha females get to the food first. The males are usually left empty-handed. We don't have a hierarchy like the lemurs. I think we are less obvious. We act more covertly. Women rule more subtly, I believe. Lots of funny things have happened over the years. Teasing, for example. I remember a chimpanzee many years ago. He was waiting for me in the dark, hiding behind a little crack. He had water in his mouth and spat at me as I passed by. He was making a joke. He was teasing me and it worked. He laughed and I laughed. 
He had made a joke and we both laughed. This is the kind of thing that makes me happy. I think I'm privileged. Maria spends most of her morning preparing the food for the zoo's inhabitants. Tamarines eat mainly fruits and vegetables, but also a lot of animal protein that we supply in the form of beetle larvae and grasshoppers. They devour them greedily. They happily bite off big chunks with their little mouths. Tamarins live in South America, mostly in the Amazon basin. In their natural environment, the little tree dwellers are threatened because their habitat, the rainforest, is being cut down. Here in the zoo, they can live as long as 25 years. I am very lucky as I live quite close, so I don't have to cycle far. And fortunately, part of this route leads me through Villa Borghese. And then I can breathe fresh air and watch squirrels run from one tree to another. And the birds. Not many people are so lucky. Our journey through the seasons in Villa Borghese is coming to an end. Now in spring, Visitors start pouring in. The beauty of the park attracts millions of them every year. Villa Borghese is perhaps one of the most extraordinary city parks in Europe. What started as a garden for a rich cardinal has become Rome's green lung, a delightful beauty spot in one of the most striking cities on earth.